Hey, it's Jeff here, and why am I sweating? Well, I just finished a workout. Decided to work out and use the Slinger bag. This thing is amazing. It's helping my game so much because I'm reinventing my technique. 47 years old at the time of this video. Working on my two-handed backhand today, and I want you to see how I teach myself how to hit a new backhand, what I'm focusing on, what I'm working on, and most importantly, the languaging. What am, I, what am I saying to myself? How am I making the corrections? Because this is one of the secrets to what the professionals are doing, and I want you to model it. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Let's get to this lesson on how I'm working on my two-handed backhand. Okay, let's dig into this lesson. You're gonna hear some commentary for, from me, and I'm also going to share with you some of the things that I'm focusing on. So let's get going right now. Backhand time. So it's backhand time. My slinger bag and I. And so the first thing that I want you to notice, the first thing I want you to notice is that because I'm trying to teach myself to hit a new backhand, I'm starting in my ready position with a backhand grip. So most of the time I start with a forehand grip, but I've already set the hands in a backhand grip because sometimes I have a hard time with my grip change from the forehand to the backhand. So if I set it right away and I close the racket face a little bit, a la Djokovic, with the racket tip up and the hands fairly low, I think one of the things that players struggle with with the backhand is they think they need to take a loop or they need to bring the hands up higher. You don't need to do that. You can keep the hands down by the waist. On a higher ball, obviously, you'd raise your hands up. But notice how the tip of the racket is up above the hands and the racket face is slightly closed, a la Djokovic. So what I want you to see here is I go to hit this ball, and you can see that my racket head has dropped below the ball. Okay, now I want you to hear what I see say after I hit this backhand. Rotated early that time. So I said rotated early that time. What does that mean? Well, probably going to offend some coaches out there, coaches that focus on the hips and, and rotating the hips first. I got to tell you, over the years working with players and with the issues I've had with my backhand, moving the hips first, or at least thinking of moving the hips first can create a lot of problems. Now, if it works for you, great, do that. But more often than not, what I see is that players think they have to rotate their hips. And what happens is the body moves at the wrong time and that actually causes the hands to slow down and causes players to mistime the ball. So what I said was I rotated too early. I want you to see my hips right here. See how, see how my hips, see how my hips and my shoulders really rotate there. I'm almost facing the net at contact, almost. And, and again, listen to what I say here. Rotated early that time. Rotated early that time. Now what I liked about this backhand is that I really stayed on my right side. Right here, if you see my posture, see how, see how I'm really aligned. Some players really lean to the left if they're a lefty and their head spills over towards their left shoulder. But I have really good posture here. It looks a little bit like Nadal, the way that he looks when he hits the backhand. You'll also notice how the racket head, I could have extended even more, how the racket head goes out and almost, almost turns over a little bit, okay? Kind of like a forehand. So that's pretty good with that backhand. It's just because I rotated early, the ball went more middle. I see players when they rotate early, the ball goes through the middle instead of cross court. Rotated early that time. Need to drop my hands more. So I just told myself I need to drop the hands more. So you're going to notice in this series, I'm going to miss a lot of backhands. What I see with players is that they are too worried about making their backhand and doing the technique right. Here, I'm just focusing on getting the technique right. I don't really care where the ball goes. Let's focus on dropping the hands, drop the hands more. So you can even see right here, I do drop the hands, okay? I do drop the hands. So that's just an example of my hands have dropped, but what it felt to me, it felt to me like I didn't drop them enough. And so in looking in this, at this now, what I realize is that one, I could focus on dropping it more, but maybe, maybe my wrist, 
Okay, right there it's relaxed. Maybe it needs to stay relaxed a little bit longer. So what's important to realize is, is to become aware of what you feel versus what is really happening. And in this case, again, I'm telling myself to drop the hands more. You can also see that my hands kind of go up. My hands don't turn over like they did on the last one. That could be a reason why the ball went into the net as well. I need to drop my hands more. So even though I tell myself drop the hands more, it doesn't mean that I didn't do it. It just means I have to exaggerate even more. So notice that right there. I made a first move as a practice. The ball didn't come out right away. So I'm practicing again this feeling of the hands down and the racket up. So let's see what happens here. See the hands don't drop. See, the, I said the hands don't drop. Now, again, if we look at this, you'll probably see the hands are going to drop. See, they drop, but there's something with the relaxation, the acceleration with the hands that makes it feel like I'm not coming below the ball enough. Even hitting, even this, I see that I'm hitting the bottom side of the racket here. I'm not hitting the ball here. So I'm not coming from below the ball enough. Even though you see that racket drop below the ball, I believe I could actually go lower or at least have the sensation or feeling that I'm doing it. See the hands don't drop. Their time they dropped. So what's interesting is I missed two balls in the net. Did I get upset? No, I kept coaching myself to drop the hands. And guess what? On the very next one, I hit one that really flew. And that's okay because I hit two in the net. Now let's see the difference here. When I come up to the ball right here, okay, it does look like I'm a little bit lower below the ball here, okay? It also, notice how I stay on my right side as well. Okay, so I got under the ball better. I have a tendency to not get under the ball enough. Their time they dropped. I'm making that first move again. So look at this. Look at my hands. Below the ball. That time it dropped. Okay, so that time it dropped. So that was probably the first one that felt really clean that I dropped underneath the ball, I got the ball cross court. So that's a good sign to see that happening. So let's take a look at this. Time it dropped. That time it dropped. So let's see. So I'm above the ball. Now I'm below the ball, and then look at how stable my body stays. Remember that first one where I, I said I over-rotated? See how my, my hip stays back a little bit? So I'm a little more sideways here. Then I'm not facing as much, and I didn't really rotate this right hip early. And I just let my hands go. Okay, still could let my hands release a little bit more. There's my shadow with my first move. No way the hands dropped under. No way the hands dropped under. Also have to drop this hand. So I'm, since I'm, I'm feeling like I'm not dropping or relaxing my left hand enough like this. See that sign I gave? Because I can feel it. I can feel it when I swing. See what I just did? My wrists are just too tight and locked. That was a big problem that I had on my back hand. Ah, covers it there, there. So it's almost like I go from here and then I cover the ball too fast. So I've really got to drop the hands and the racket, fa more. racket face more. I just said keep the hands in front more. So I'm constantly cueing myself. Still haven't locked in yet. That was a good one. That was a good one. So that was the first, probably the second one that was solid, but the first one that really got cross court. So let's see what we notice here, if there's anything different from the ones that I hit well. So racket's up, racket drops below the ball, and then look at my, again, look at my posture. See how I'm staying on my right side? Look at, and also look at how the racket face turned over, like that very first forehand, uh, backhand that I hit. So... What's happening is when I'm, when I'm tight with my hands, my hands don't release, the hands don't turn over. 
That was a perfect backhand right there for, for what I'm that trying was to do. A good one. Right there. See? I just showed right there. So I start. I start up. I drop it down and look how look how I'm exaggerating this feeling. How much how below the ball can I get it? How far below the ball can I get? That was a good one. And I got it again. That was a good one. Notice how I'm giving myself that positive feedback. So let's see what it looks like here. Again, look at my posture. See how I'm I rotated my hips a little bit. See how I'm staying on my right side? Got under the ball. One of the biggest one. one of the biggest things for me is getting under the ball. I feel like I'm almost leaning back a little. I just said, feel like I'm almost leaning back. I have a tendency to lean forward. A lot of players do. That makes the ball go down. So if you feel more upright or that you're almost leaning back and you drop your hands under the ball, you can get that trajectory. You can get that spin. You can get the ball to drop. So you can see, again, when I swing here, see how my body just stays back. It's not leaning forward. See how my hands are turning over and releasing. I feel when the body stays back and the body doesn't over rotate, the hands can really like accelerate. I'm leaning back a little, but I'm setting the hands here. Setting the hands. Ooh, I, Even though I missed in the net, that felt good. See my, and then look at what I'm showing here, that I'm feeling my right side. My right side. See that? So let's go back and look at that swing. Look at, this is the one where I really, really was tilted. Look how tilted I am to the right on this. I have a tendency to lean forward and lean to the left. Look at when I swing at this ball, look at how, look at my body right there, a la Nadal. I'm staying on the right side. That helps me drop underneath the ball. Ooh, I'm keeping my head on my right side. Keeping my head on the right side. That felt, that felt great. Okay, listen to this. Let's listen to that again and watch the swing. That felt good. That felt good. So that was probably my best swing of the whole series. I kept my body on my right shoulder. I'm sorry, my head on my right shoulder. Look at that. Look at this right there. See how my chin is? See where my head is? See where my body is? Probably the most exaggerated leaning to the right with my head on the right side of my body and the hands turning over. That felt good. Just staying on the right side keeps me under the ball. This is not what you're going to hear from other coaches. Other coaches are going to say, rotate your hips, step into the ball, hit the ball flatter, or whatever. You're not going to hear, stay on the right side. I did it again. Stayed on the right side. See, I did it again. Watch, watch the adjustment I've made. Look at my head position when I swing. Right there. See, see right there. That position right there, I'm tilted more to the right. That helps me get under the ball. Hands out more. Hands out. We're trying to get the hands out and away from the body so I can extend. And so you can see, look at my process. I'm constantly coaching myself. I'm adjusting. I'm aware of my body position. I'm aware of my hands. And I'm locking into what works for, for me. So what I want you to do is when you go on the court, pay attention to your hands. Are they dropping? Pay attention to your head position, your body position. See if you can drop under the ball. See if you can release your hands. I know it's a lot of things I'm mentioning, but you want to be scanning your body. You want to be feeling. You want to be noticing what you're noticing, okay? And be aware of it and make these adjustments and keep encouraging yourself. All right, that's how you can improve your backhand. And you can do it with a slinger bag and you can do it focusing on specific concepts. So you can see, listen, I'm not perfect. I miss shots in the net. I miss hit balls. That's the learning process. Every time I miss, it's feedback. It teaches me what I need to do on the next shot. And I'm working on really timing my hands, really modeling kind of that Djokovic backhand because I didn't have that on the tour. And that was one reason I struggled out there. If I would have known this when I was 16, it could have been a different story, but hey, it's all right. Now I'm a coach and now I'm teaching myself how to hit a backhand and you can do it too. Get this slinger bag over here, get on the court, get fit, start sweating, move around and work on your game and tell yourself you can do it. Focus on giving yourself feedback every time you miss a shot and also give you yourself feedback if you make a shot. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Click the link below if you wanna take your game to the next level. We're here to help you at Tennis Evolution. Thanks for your time today.